partner at Design Map, and I'm just going to address the elephant in the room to use a somewhat unfortunate phrase given this situation. <laughs> the answer is yes, it's a girl, November 6th. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, she's my third, and no, I'm not that nervous right now. I, I don't think birth is going to happen anytime soon. Pause <laughs> Pandora. Oh, Pandora. So we're not uh, distracting. There we go. All right, so back to this. Uh, it is relevant to growth, though. I thought that was funny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'm a partner at Design Map. We're just a couple blocks up the road. Uh, we design products. Um, specifically, we like to work in pretty complex spaces, taking complicated stuff and helping people make those, those products do the things they need them to do for clients like Exact Target and Bloomberg and eBay. Um, so I'm gonna talk to something that's relevant to everyone, so related to personal growth with some examples that are specific to growth marketing. That's my plan. Um, so I'm gonna start, how many of you ever watched the show Smash, that TV show? Yeah, so it's canceled. It was only two seasons, but it's about a Broadway musical and I have a background in theater, so I loved it because it was super accurate. Uh, and I wanted to share this scene with you. So they're in rehearsal for a show and a new director is working with this leading lady while the chorus is watching. And this guy is, when I say new director, not only new to the show, but not an experienced director. So now there's gonna be audio. Everybody cross your fingers. Anyway, um, totally not playing at all in Hell any way. I'm here. Oh. But isn't this when things were going terribly wrong for her? Everyone on set hated her. I mean, she was hiding out in her trailer, popping pills. Yeah, but we don't want to telegraph that, so she's putting on a brave face. So uh, when she says, here she is, boys, Marilyn Monroe in the flesh, she's up? Trying to be. It's like, here she is, boys, Marilyn Monroe in the flesh. Did he just give her a line reading? Derek is the So, could you hear th that at all? Yeah. Does anybody, does anybody have a background in theater? Do you know what he just did to her? Come on. Yeah, come on. What is it called? It's, it's called, and that was what the chorus members of there said. <gasps> did he just give her a line reading? So, in theater, which is in, right, line reading, theater is an old and well-established profession, and even in high school, you don't have directors giving line readings to actors. It's a horrible thing to do. Everybody would be aghast if you did it. And the reason that it's a horrible thing to do is the implication from the director to the actor is, the best thing that you have to offer this show is being a perfect mimic of me. Your background, your experience, your input is not required here. Uh, so this happens to designers too, and it looks like that, right? It's, uh, it might not be drawn on a napkin, it might be drawn on a whiteboard, or it might not be drawn at all, it might be written. But at one point in every designer's life, you've had somebody draw something like this for you and say, can you just take this and make it look pretty? It's the moral equivalent of a line reading, right? Uh, it happens to marketers too, so there was lots of talk in this panel about having a strategic growth plan, and then somebody dropping in and saying, hey, uh, those guys are doing it too, so we should just do it, but it might not make sense or even fit with your strategic growth plan. There might be something like akin to this, right? Like, we'll just do it, and then... <laughs> Right, so it's like some solution that gets dictated to you that doesn't make sense necessarily given your experience, your background, or worse, maybe, um, well, we're agile, so let's just try it, but test it like this, and maybe you do something where you're only doing one variable testing and you get kind of crappy test results out of the thing, right? Either one of those things could happen to growth marketers. It happens to product managers with CEOs having visions and showers. Uh, it happens to teachers when they get a lesson plan, sometimes dictated by the hour. Regardless of their experience of training or how well they know the kids, they get this kind of a lesson plan. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, great, thank you. Developers, 
uh, ha CTO who hasn't written a line of code in 15 years knows exactly how you should build it and how long it should take, right? Happens to parents. Those napkins look something like this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. I should always talk while the blood sugar is high right after lunch. So um, as a parent, and there's no kids here, right, I, I have the idea of what's best for them for Christmas, but instead I get this napkin, right? Like they're telling me what to do. It happens to everyone. I've met people who quit their jobs because all they ever got was napkins. Anybody who has a significant other or a parent probably had them tell you what to get for the anniversary or what to get for their birthday. Estheticians, I met airplane pilots, event planners, wedding planners, of course. Um, and usually what these things have in common is they start with the word just, these requests, right? Could you just, and then there's something. And I'm collecting these, so if you have any of them, please tweet them or come find me. You know, just, just be creative now that the creative part is done. Make it sexy. Just fill in the details. It's just details now. Or do your, you know, <laughs> make it sparkle. That's the ironic sparkly shoes. Um, so has anybody gotten a napkin before? <laughs> Come on. A is anybody not gotten a napkin before? Come talk to me after. I'll explain to you the napkins in your life. Um, so what do you do when you get this napkin, right? It can make you feel crazy no matter what you do for the same reason it is for actors because the implication is that you have nothing to offer. You want to make a contribution, but the implication that is that you can't and that your contribution isn't needed. Because designing is a lot more than just guessing up somebody's sketch, right? And so. I'm going to use this as a replacement for the design process or your process for doing whatever you do, because we all know this model, right? So um, if we say this is the design process, this is a design thinking model from Stanford, then a napkin is like over here. It's the prototype, right? It's like skip all that stuff. We don't need that. Just take this prototype and test it. And so I'm going to define a napkin as that. It's skipping to the end of a conversation, the outline of a solution that kills the chance for others to make meaningful contributions. It's important to note that not all napkins are napkins. So if you get a napkin drawing that's meant to begin a conversation, it's not skipping to the prototype step, right? It's like somewhere earlier in the process. But if it's meant to end the conversation, that's by my definition a napkin. So you get that? So when this napkin drawing seems to be squishing our opportunity to contribute. And this happens to all of us. It happened to me as a younger designer. Now it happens to the younger designers that work for me. They get frustrated. And I say, well, uh, what do you want from them? Like, you want not the drawing, but the background, the goal, the idea. Well, let's start by, let's start by designing not the product itself, which I'm going to call first order design here, but let's design the system in which you're getting the napkin. So this is fourth order design. This is a Richard Buchanan idea who's at MIT or CMU. I can't remember which order he did those in. So let's talk about designing the system in which you get napkins. And so the first step, right, in our design thinking process is empathize. So why did you get a napkin? Maybe you got it because it's not optional. I've gotten napkins that were stapled to contracts that were signed. <laughs> so you have, you're like, okay, well, there's an, a banner ad, and it has to go at the top of the page above the fold, and it's got to be in, in this much in, running in this much inventory, and so um, that's just how it is. The person who gave you a napkin might be really rushed for time, and they're like, we just got to get that out here, so let's just go with this. Um, you might be apprenticing, and this is a tricky one, but... Uh, sometimes, if, if you think of a relationship with the person you're working for as an apprenticeship, like a blacksmith or the karate kid, <laughs> the person that is the mentor may say, go wax my car. And you don't know why, and they're not sharing their goals or why with you, but there's this apprenticeship relationship that is prescriptive, uh, and that's what's happening in that moment. Um, 
They may truly think that the thing they drew is the best solution. And I'm gonna segue and I'll come right back, I promise. But there's this great idea called the Dunning-Kruger effect. Has anybody heard of that? Somebody's laughing, so you've heard of it. Um, so this is this awesome thing where, uh, if you imagine a chart where on the left we have confidence and on the bottom we have competence, imagine how the line goes. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, the less competent you are, the more confident you are. In other words, uh, when you're bad at something, you think you're good at it. And once you get really good at it, you tend to underestimate your capability. And you can see this in play if anybody watches Jimmy Kimmel Live and he goes out on the streets at South by Southwest and he says to people like, what do you think of this new band, Contact Dermatitis? They're pretty awesome, right? Do you think they have what it's gonna take to make it to the top? And people say, yeah, Contact Dermatitis is awesome. <laughs> Love them. They don't know, but they feel pretty confident, you know? And so people giving you napkins may think that they're really good at whatever, the na whatever they're drawing, even though perhaps they're not. And it's important to think for yourself about the other end of the spectrum. Maybe you're underestimating your capabilities when you're actually pretty good at something. Um, they may just not understand what your job is. They may think that this is it. Um, but my, to my point earlier about the younger designers, it's, it's hard to back out of that napkin and say, well, you know, this is, these are the people that I'm trying to reach and this, these are their goals and this is my understanding of the business. That's tough. And so instead of getting pissed off, we should maybe take on that hard work ourselves and think about how we can help them communicate that stuff and design a system such that they understand better how to communicate that stuff and also such that they understand how we can contribute. Does that make sense? I'm asking a room of 150 people if it makes sense, but is anybody like, what the hell? Nobody's raising their hand. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so once you've empathized, you can work backwards um, into ideation. So this is what I'm proposing and what I've been doing actually, it's kind of interesting, is take that napkin, take that prototype and just try ideating a little bit. And over time you'll kind of see that you can step further and further back into your process. And people will understand your contribution better and they'll bring you better stuff without the expectation that you're going to take it as the final word. So um, I have collected or hacked together seven of these. Um, but obviously I'm not gonna go through all seven of them. I picked the two simple ones that I think are still interesting and I'm gonna go through those now. Um, so the first one is uh, called I Saw You Draw and it's based on the active listening technique of I Heard You Say. Do you guys know that? No? Yeah? Like one person. Okay, so you can point, right? You could say, I heard you say da 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 and you play back what they said. It's an active listening technique. And, the, and so you can um, alter this to be, I saw you draw. So this is a drawing of a detailed car detail page for a website. It's got detailed information about car, a car on it. And so we can just take that and while they're there, redraw it. Now there's two important things about this technique. One is that it's not additive. I didn't add color, I didn't go to a computer, or even a whiteboard, right? It took the same exact materials. And so, and, and it's the second important thing is that it's conversational. So while the person is there, you can say, um, I don't understand this quote thing at all. Like, what does that even say? And they could say, oh, well, we're having trouble meeting our quarterly deadlines for our quarterly goals for driving people to the dealer, and that's an important revenue generator for us. Oh, I get it, okay, so you could draw that in. And so as you're drawing and asking questions, you'll be learning about the business, about some research they read or saw or something they heard from somebody else. And as you're doing so, you're gleaning, you're backing up a little bit into where, what the goals were, where these ideas came from. Um, I realized that the timer started three and a half hours ago. How much time do I have left? Couple minutes, no problem. Okay, so the second one is three things. 
And so this is just ask the question, can you tell me the three most important things that this napkin does? Um, and then make three new versions, each focused on one of the answers. So I talked about the getting a quote from a dealer thing. Okay, well, let's just make a new version that's all about getting a quote from a dealer and focus 100% on that. And then we'll make a new version that's all about comparing cars and we'll focus on that. And so in each one of these cases, you'll see that I'm not saying like, throw it away. I'm saying if, if I can, like mine the napkin for ideas, have a humility of an approach that says, I, I'm not here to school you, but I'm very interested to learn where these ideas came from. Um, because, and also it can be insulting, right, to throw the napkin away. And then in your fourth order design goals, you're kind of missing the mark. Couple things, does anybody draw napkins? Or write napkins? Come on. I mean, he's like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was thinking about this idea for a couple months before I realized that I do it. When I write proposals for my team, when we're engaging with a client, I'm all excited, like, how are we going to do this? It's going to be great. And I write the proposal, and then the team that's working on it had no input on that. So I changed that, actually. But it took me a couple months to even realize that I was doing it. So be introspective, recognize that you have a problem, and um, I'm going to skip the rest of that slide, but remember that it's a long game, right? You're not designing in the first and second order the product itself. You're designing in the fourth order the system in which the products get designed. And so in order to be a change agent in your organization, you might design several products or pages or engagements before you really are, have moved the system. One more thing to note, um, the anti-napkin. So I'm going to use this to define my napkin idea more clearly. The opposite of a napkin, the opposite of very prescriptive, is no gold bounds at all. When people say, just make it fun, you know, just, we just want it to be sticky. So knock yourself out. <laughs> that would be the, it's probably a different talk, right? Is, is somebody asking you for help with no boundaries at all. Um, so now you know what to do. Uh, this was based on and hacked together uh, and all about standing on the shoulders of giants. So I'll make this available for the people and the ideas that it was based on. Um, I'm collecting napkins, so we have a little website or come find me. I would love to hear any napkin from any walk of life. Super interested in this idea. And then in uh, next week, uh, I'm going to go through all seven of the techniques at the Designers and Geeks meetup. So if you want to hear more, come find me after, or I'll see you next week. Okay? Thanks. Thanks.